Hello and welcome to What's Bubbling is in Bureau. I am Dr. Abstract and in this bubbling we're going to take a look at what's new in Zim 015. Let's go to Zim site now at zimjs.com. We've already had a bunch of bubblings uh, showing you through things. You can get there by hitting the Zim 015 or the What's New. If we hit the Zim 015, we had done bubblings on the general updates there. We've also taken you through bubblings, the first bubbling of the texture actives I was looking through these three and then looking through these three in the second bubbling of those. But we didn't look at any code. So that's what we're here to do now is look at some code. And we'll look at the code for this one right here. And kind of take an overview of what's there. And then at a later date, we'll do some uh, Zim Explore videos, they're called, where we look through the code of each of these uh, in depth. All right, so we're going to be looking at this one right here, which is a menu in a sense. So we've got a draggable circle there. We can change the color of the circle and animate it and the size with a slider. And then on the back is a Zim icon that says Canvas Window. If we press this, it shows us the Zim parts. Here's one of the Zim parts, and here's the other of the Zim parts. And we can press it to go back, or we can close like so. All right, so let's dig into the code to see how this was done. Uh, let's see. First of all, um, Zim is a JavaScript Canvas framework. And under the code section right here, is a place where we can grab the Zim template by hitting copy. And that would get us started with Zim in a normal sense. There's also the editor. Well, this is Zim. And as you can see, we've got a import of Zim right there. We've got a frame. And then once that frame is ready, we can do things like drag a circle. OK, and that's kind of what's there. If we look at the editor, the editor is also a place. We were just looking at the emitter on the editor, but let me clear that. Uh, the editor is also a place where we can do Zim code, but that frame is already given to us. So all we would do is put the circle here, for instance, new circle dot center dot drag, like so. And if we test, we have a circle in the center that we can drag and we can make that bigger. 100 and red and hit control s and that saves it so there we go that's what zim is like and what we're going to try and do now is take a draggable circle and put it onto a texture in 3js so let's have a look at the code we're dropping this down i'm coming to the texture active code right here uh, this is the source code of that example and we have a module and we're importing Zim from here, except we've also imported 3JS through that. So that, that imports Zim, the Zim 3 helper module, and 3JS as well as orbit controls, first person controls, and GLTF uh, loader. So just some that we quite often use. All right, and that bundles it. We also have a texture active raw that I'm going to take you through that doesn't do that. It only works with 3JS and Zim, but uh, in a raw sense uh, without the three helper module. So I know how it is when you're viewing a new framework or something, you know, something different. It's always kind of weird to see. It's like, oh no, what's going on? So hopefully Zim won't be as difficult as many frameworks. We don't think it is. Here we are importing Zim. We're going to make a new frame. We're going to fit that to the window. And that's what does this fitting feel. You see how that, that's in an iframe right there. But uh, this, this is the canvas right there and it fits. It won't really matter for us in our, in our situation because what happens is we can build as much as we want on this canvas. But each individual thing that we build is what gets mapped. So it really doesn't matter where it's placed on the canvas. As a matter of fact, what we automatically do is when we're doing this texture active system, I think you saw it, we just tile them going way off to the right and then we slide through them. So the actual construction of where things are on the canvas doesn't really matter to us. As we're building, it matters a little bit. 
uh, as we're building, we probably want to see it. So we don't necessarily want it to be way off to the right. We want to look at it. But that's a process that can perhaps be explored in the Zim Explorer videos coming up. Right now, I just want to show you through the code that is here. All right, we've got a frame. It's fitting. There's the dimensions for it. There's some colors. And when we're ready, it calls this function right there. That's a callback. We're given F for the frame, S for the stage, W for the width and height. Again, this stuff doesn't really matter quite as much because we're not really building for Zim. We're building for the stuff to put into 3JS. We have some good comments here, and you're welcome to read through those. You should read through every line of these if you're planning on using texture actives. And there's a link to the examples. But this video is basically taking us through these lines, so we're not going to read them now. As a matter of fact, I'll just reduce them there. So here's where the code starts. We're making a new texture active. This comes from Zim. If you're used to namespaces, Zim can be set up with the namespace as well, and then it would be Zim texture active. But we tend to be, since a frame, we're a framework, we tend to work without the namespace. It just makes it easier. So there's our new texture active class um, that is new to Zim 015 right there. We're setting the width and the height of this. This is the main menu panel, so we're just going to make it as big as the stage, the width and the height there. We're setting a color. Note that we've got an alpha on that color, so white dot two alpha is a way that we can turn any anything any color that we put in front of it to an alpha as an option. We can also pass in RGBA, for instance, here. And we've added a corner to the menu. The texture active is uh, well. Let me just say this. I'm talking to two different groups of people here. One group is people that have already worked in Zim that haven't worked in 3JS yet, and they're quite familiar with Zim things. And then also a group of people, hopefully, <laughs> that are coming from 3JS that haven't seen Zim before. So I'm catering more towards the people who are coming in from 3JS who haven't seen Zim before as we go through this. So I'm assuming that you haven't seen any Zim. Um, this texture active is much like, for those of you who know Zim though, is like a Zim page, or indeed a Zim page is very much like a Zim container. A Zim page is just a container that has a backing color <laughs> to it. <laughs> we, we got tired in, in Zim, the, the story goes, we got tired of people asking, we have a, we have a pages class which helps you swipe between pages, etc. And everybody would ask, well, how do you make a page? And we say, well, make a new container and that's your page. And then eventually we said, okay, fine. We'll make a new page class and uh, it just has a background color. So we've, we've extended the page class to make this texture active class. We've added a few things like a corner because when we made them pay a page class, it wasn't really expected that they would be panels on, on the screen. It was more like the whole screen. So we've added to the texture active class, not only corners, but border and border width as well. So that's nice there for you. But anyway, it's basically just a container that is also set up in the back to handle uh, the fact that it's going to be cached and put into a texture. And there's a few other, other properties that are stored on it to just help the whole system work. But there you go. This is where we're putting the stuff. And we've called it menu there, and we're adding it to the stage. That means as we're building it, if this was all that we had, we would actually see, well, we wouldn't quite see it. Oh, yeah, we would, because it would have a background color, um, so we'd see it on the stage. Here we are adding a circle to it. We're adding a button to it, a slider, a, a logo, a made with thing, a color picker. And we've added a header bar kind of with a texture active make logo or masking so the rectangle and we get to the back of the panel. So let's just comment all of this stuff that we put on it out at the moment. Bump, like so. And I'm gonna reduce this down. Bump. All right, and so just ignoring what we put on the panel, what we've got is a menu, a panel, and then a backing. And the backing has uh, this custom backing that we've already made that says canvas window in Zim. All right, so good. Let's just see what this looks like. I save it and I'm gonna open it up in a default browser. There it is, there's the empty panel and there's that canvas backing. 
Okay, and we'll see how we got that into 3JS, but right now I just want to talk about getting something simple from Zim onto this texture right here. And are you ready? Here it is. Earlier we went new circle. Now well, let's make it 100 comma red dot center dot drag like that. That's what we saw in the editor. Uh, we're not going to center it on the stage. That would center it on the stage and that could be a very big hiccup to start um, because we want to center it on the menu. If it's not in the menu, we're not going to see it on the texture. So there we are centering the circle on the menu. It's one thing to remember, especially if you come from Zim and you're very used to, hey, let's just center it on the stage. Uh, we all know, or we should know, that by default it will center it on the stage, but we can also center it on any other container, including a texture active um, menu up here. <laughs> all right, so there we go. We've centered it on the menu. We're setting it to drag. And are you ready? We come on over here and refresh. There's our circle, and it's draggable. Amazing. Here's the backing. Circle. Okay. What we would normally have made with Zim, if I hit the T key, is something. Here it is. This is what it looks like. So we made it as big as the stage. There's the stage. There's the circle. We're dragging it there. And then over here is the backing. So that's, uh, that's what we've just made in Zim. And we're very used to making stuff like that in Zim. But then what we're doing is we're caching this and we are taking the cache canvas of it. You don't need to know this because we've got it all worked out for you. Taking the cache canvas of it and putting it into a canvas texture in 3JS. All right, let's go back. To go back, you hit the X there, hit the T key. And let's move on over here. So there you go. We don't really need to go through and look at the stuff inside of Zim, although you might like it if this is your first time coming into Zim. But there are many, many, many other videos that will help you learn how to use Zim. Why don't we just take a peek at a couple places where those can be found. So back in Zim, this is the Zim site, zimjs.com. There's a learn module here. There's that circle that we were talking about. Here's the editor. We also have a start right here. There's a start demo in the editor. So uh, let's press that. There it is. And if you hit code, it's got lots of commented code on, on what we're doing there. It's also these things called zaps over here. Uh, these are my zaps, maybe I'll log out. So uh, faves. there are feature zaps. So if you come into zaps, you would see features you would see basics. And there's the start here. There are shapes, blobs, beziers, transfer, animations, all sorts of uh, basic demos. There's some mid-level uh, demos right there. And you can take, press on any of those and, and see them. Uh, then there's advanced. There's more full kind of things. There's also a set of features as well. Somewhere there's the features. And so here's some animation in Zim. Whoosh. And you can put that animation on a texture. Uh, but where it's more fun is when you're dealing with more interactive parts. Uh, we've got all these components. So here's some. You've seen the sliders and dials, those components. Oh, there's the little grid that we were talking about in one of the earlier bubblings. Okay, so that's a selector, but in a grid. These are just three easy components we're showing there. You hit the code like that. And if you like it, you bring it over. I'm going to overwrite my right-hand side. You bring over the code onto here, and I can test it. And now I can test things. Oh, I don't want it on that. I want it on red color. Now it's on a red color, or maybe purple. Okay, so this is now you're in the editor, and there we are testing away. So that's one way to learn is, is through all that stuff. But also back in the Learn section here, aside from the editor, there's some information in general about the canvas but you've got the videos. And I would suggest the Zim Basics videos set right here. Not the Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. That's how to learn, that's JavaScript. So if you haven't learned JavaScript, hey, that's great. You can learn JavaScript through Zim and there's tons of videos there that all take you through how to do that on the canvas. That's this series. But the Zim Basics, assuming you know JavaScript, will help you um, with Zim Basics. Um, so there's a, that's a series, a YouTube series. If you want to see what Zim can do, there's a Code in 5 Minutes series. That's a lot of fun. We try and build a whole bunch of stuff in 5 minutes. The Zim Explorer is much longer. It, they, those things are about an hour long. 
and that's where we build there. I've also got a whole set of tutorials for Adobe and Animate, or sorry, Zim and Animate, because uh, Adobe Animate exports to CreateJS, and that's what Zim's built on. There's lessons, creative coding lessons on CodePen, so you can check those out. We do a lot of lessons for kids, so if you're younger, you might want to take a look at those. And we've got Zim School for high school and beyond. And university or college at Sheridan, um, that's where I teach. So you're welcome to come in there and hang out if you like reading, if you like the looks of books, for instance, like reading code books. Uh, there is a comprehensive Your Guide to Coding Creativity on the Canvas that uh, has 12 sub guides that lead you through all of the things that Zim can can do from you know basic shapes to style to emitters to you know, working with noise and, and physics etc. All right and there's a whole set of tutorials that are much older but oh well these guys aren't older these are the Zim bits so that's 64 bits of smaller things that you can do and all of this stuff can go right on to a cube, for instance, and work on a cube. Uh, that's just amazing, or it can go on a wall. So you can have a puzzle on a wall or a little game on the wall in your VR world. We're so looking forward to having that happen. All right, so that's a little uh, overview look at the tutorials and the learn section, okay. So let's leave that alone and come back to our code here. So we have two ways to go. One is we can take a look at how it goes into 3GS, and I think that would be the wise thing to do right now. Uh, the second thing is to take a look at those components that we added to the panel to make it work beyond just the circle that we had here. Okay, so let's take a look and see how it works in, J in 3JS first. And then we can come back and take a look if you still have uh, the energy in your mind. You're always welcome to pause and take a cookie, get a cookie or a, some licorice, etc. Um, all right, so we've got these two texture actives called menu and backing. <clears throat> now we're down in 3JS. And Zim has a three helper module, and that's where this three class comes from. So if you're coming from the 3JS the side, you're probably going to look at this and go, oh, no, I just want to do my 3JS. And we do have a raw version where we just do that. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the Zim version and we'll pop into the raw version. So on the Zim side here, we're passing in the width and height and the camera position that we want. We've pulled it back in the Z500 to take a look at this. And then we're turning on Texture Active True. Uh, Zim 3 was initially built to put 3JS inside of Zim. It really over, overlaid it on top of Zim and then let Zim control the overlaid 3JS. But it's still handy to use this three helper module. To This basically is making our scene, our render, and our camera, all that stuff, and our uh, render function. That's it. That's all we needed here. So it's a wrapper for all of that, just to make it easier for us when we're using Zim to bring in 3JS stuff. So it's still helpful here when we're wanting to bring Zim into 3JS rather than 3JS into Zim. We're storing local versions of that, or local variables for that. Here's a skybox that we're loading in and adding it to the scene. So this is your traditional 3JS stuff where we're making a geometry, a basic material uh, that's mapped to that image, and then a 3JS mesh. So here, here we're kind of flipping it a little bit, and this would be for the people who code in Zim who haven't coded in 3JS. Luckily, the two frameworks are very similar. They're similar in ease of use and in sort of their nice, uh, nice clean look. I really like 3JS out of all of the other frameworks. Um, they've done a wonderful job. There's still kind of lots of steps to do where we're joining a geometry, the material, and the mesh. So that takes a little bit of getting used to, but there is definite reasons for doing that. Whereas if using something like Box2D, um, <laughs> it's kind of like, come on, you guys, that's abstraction in the extreme. Box2D was taking like, I don't know, 20 lines of code to make a box. We abstracted it in Zim physics. 
to make it one line of code to make a box much easier. So that, that was just, you know, a headache. But 3JS is actually very wonderful to work with. So uh, there we've added a skybox. Here are the orbit controls brought in. We have the orbit controls are being imported uh, by default. And then here's the texture active part. So new texture actives. Texture actives is going to manage whatever texture active objects that we have. And then later you're going to see we can map um, we can map those together. So we pass in the menu and the backing there. We're also passing in our reference to three, a reference to the Zim 3 object, the render, the scene, the camera, and the controls. If we were always using three, we could have avoided those things, but uh, we, we left them in there on purpose. This is your um, layer that you want to use for your texture actives. That's kind of important because what we're doing is we are raycasting on to the 3JS materials and passing that data into Zim. So if we're not wanting to, we don't need to raycast on all the 3JS objects, only the ones that are holding uh, our materials. Um, and initially our interactive materials. Initially, we calculated that out, figured that out ourselves. Um, oh no, that's that's another matter. But this is this is specifically a layer. So here we are saying, let's put all those on layer one, and that way we only raycast layer one. If you leave that off, it just will raycast everything. But it's not quite as efficient, especially if you have lots of stuff in your three JS scene. Here's a near and far. So I don't know if you noticed, I'm not sure I mentioned it here, so you probably didn't notice it, but right now we can interact with it. But if I pull far away, I can't interact with it. I can still use the orbit controls, but I have to be close enough. Did you see that? It just sort of flips all of a sudden. I can still do it, but now I can't do it. So there I can't do it, here I can do it. So that's your, your near far set right there. Okay, we can get um, we can get events. So in Zim, we use the on method instead of add event listener. Add event listener will also work, but on shorter. And so texture active dot on ray move. There's also ray up and ray down, etc. So that will uh, help us if we want. Need that. And here we are making the mesh. So this makes a mesh that we're going to add to the scene. Zim has if if the mesh happens to have a plane geometry, so a flat plane, then we can use the make panel helper function. So we put that in purposely because a lot of the, the work that we're doing with Zim is going to be on a flat panel, especially for interfaces and so forth. But remember that we can also put this on cylinders, on spheres, on, on any uh, geometry. Uh, but majority of them will probably be a plane, so we've abstracted the maybe four or five lines of code needed to do roughly this stuff up here. And one more line. All right, so this is make panel, and we say what the texture active, this is the Zim texture active object, and what the manager is, so texture actives here. And basically, that will register in texture actives, it will register that the menu is um, a texture active there. And in behind here, it, it makes the material, well, it makes the texture, makes the material, makes the geometry, makes the mesh. And uh, that's how the ray casting, this ray casting knows because all of this stuff is, uh, is worked out. And there we are adding the canvas window to the scene. We do the same thing with the backing mesh. So we're making a panel. In this case, we're setting the transparent of uh, that material to true and having an alpha 0.5. We could have done that by default. Uh, let's see, I don't think the, can't remember if it's default true already. It might be because we've got, do we have transparency here? Yeah, we do. So this is, us making the, the panel transparent in Zim so we can see it through it. We don't have to. So up above here, pop, 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 pop. 
remember that one. Let's make it, um, well, keep it white. And I refresh here. Now it's not transparent. So that must mean that the transparency is set to true by default. Transparent on that side. <laughs> okay, here we didn't make this one transparent. We just made the backing black. And everything that we put on it isn't transparent either, or like it has no alpha. And so the transparency that we're seeing there is coming because we made the uh, material transparent. Right here. Okay, we add that to the scene and we've rotated that. That's a mesh, so we've now taken that and rotated around the Y 180 degrees. And basically we're, we're seeing it on the other side there. So Here's us looking at it, and we flip that around, and this is what it looks like from the back. So we only have a single-sided um, material. Okay. Double-sided actually works. Do you want to see that? It's kind of fun. So why don't we, can I just not add this? I think I can, like so. And uh, right, we don't have access to the texture directly here. I can't remember if we've exposed the double-sided. I think we have, yes. So most likely we did, but uh, okay. Well, why don't we look at it in the raw version where we can um, directly access that. Okay, so there we go. That was it. Um, we've got some things in here that we didn't show you. For instance, here's animation. So this is us setting the scale of that canvas window to zero to start. And then we're using the Zim animate function. Usually in Zim, we use the animate method on objects, but we're now going to animate a target which is not a Zim object. It's a it's canvas window, so this is a 3JS mesh. And there we are animating those properties to one. We're waiting 0.2 seconds, and uh, we're animating at a time of 0.5 seconds with an ease back out, and here's what we get. We also have an ignore list, and that probably would be better for one of the Zim explorers. But basically, it's saying that if we have objects in front of our menu, we can choose to ignore them, and that means we can interact with the menu right through them or not. And that's an ignore list. There we go. So we've got two things left to look at in this bubbling, and we don't want to be too, too much longer. One is what are the rest of the contents in that menu, and do we want to look at those? And the second is the raw version of, of this without the, the Zim helpers. As you can see with the Zim helpers, it's pretty easy. We start Zim. This is skybox stuff. That's control stuff. We have one line for the texture actives, and basically we have two lines to make a panel and add that to the scene. Okay, that's, that's great. Let's look at the raw version. So here's the raw version. In this case, we're importing uh, 3JS uh, version 155 and orbit controls that go along with that. And then there is Zim without the three stuff. So that's just normal import of Zim. We've also got some <laughs> some legacy uh, full screens. I'm not sure if there's better ways to do that now. Full screens and window resize from long, long ago. Uh, and anyway, here's uh, Zim now. Oh, we don't need that font anymore. And there's the comments. Here's the menu. So all, all the Zim stuff is still the same. We've still got the circle and all that stuff left in there. And we're hopefully going to come back and take a look. But here's the 3JS stuff, which is a little bit different. So we're making a scene with the 3JS scene. We're setting up a camera, a perspective camera, and positioning that back a thousand. Then we're making a render. Uh, note that we're using 155, so that's the latest current latest version of 3JS, and it has all sorts of changes, well, changes to the color space and so forth that has happened over the last few versions. 
So uh, just be aware of that. And then here's our resize stuff. So this is the raw code, what, what I'm calling raw 3JS code. That's what we would do if we were just in raw 3JS. Here's the skybox stuff that we had before. Here's the texture active that's the same, except we passed in null or undefined for the um, for the three J or for the three helper module from Zim because we don't have that. For the menu, this time we're making a plane geometry with a width and height. That's that comes from the Zim width and height, I guess. Right. So that will match the uh, Zim width and height. Then we told it to make a canvas texture and we passed the canvas property of our menu. For the backing, we pass the canvas property of the backing. So we don't pass in the backing directly. The backing is a Zim object, but we pass in the canvas uh, property of it. So that's something that we just made in Zim to be able to, so when we made the texture active, we cache it and that gives us a cache canvas. We don't really like the, the word cache canvas. It's a touch confusing. So we added to the texture active a canvas property and that makes it a bit more easy to remember what you're doing here. Just pass in the canvas property of that Zim texture active. This is 3JS. I don't know, I guess it's documented now. For a while it was undocumented. I'm not sure, or it was kind of like secret. I'm not sure what, what the deal is with the canvas texture, but we're very happy that it's there. And we've been looking forward to using it for quite some time, but just finally got around to it, uh, which is great. Then we're making, we're meshing that. So we're mapping the texture, the canvas texture. We're, we're um, mapping that onto the material. We set it to transparent. Ah, here's where the double-sided is, so we can have a peek at that. Then we mesh the geometry and the material together and add it to the scene. So all this is what I would call raw 3JS, the traditional things we're doing there. Then we have one extra method that uh, needs to be done for the texture actives. So on the texture actives object right here, on the texture actives, we say add mesh. We pass it the canvas window and we match right here the layer. Okay, so after doing this for maybe three or four proje uh, projects and saying, oh my God, it's the same every time, that's when we decided to abstract that and make it uh, the make panel um, function. So the make panel function basically does all that except for the adding to the scene and it does this too. So let's have a look. Here's the menu here, the raw menu doing all of the different parts, which is which is fine. It's not that hard and you're very used to it. So you can continue to do it this way. As a matter of fact, if you're mapping onto material or onto geometries that are not a plane, then you're going to have to do it this way. And so in many of the other examples where we're mapping onto a cylinder, uh, we don't use the, um, the easy way. But here's the here's the sort of the long way. And if we go over here, here's the short way. So the, the make panel does all of this and that. By default, it will, because we told it which texture active to do, by default, it will look at that texture active and see which layers are turned on and automatically pass in the matching layer. Okay. So we've told it uh, right here, the texture active, so it, it can figure out what layers are turned on there and it will handle it properly. So there you go. For a plane, that's what we're talking about. Or you can do it the traditional way. And we do the same thing with the, the backing mesh right there. Oh, and there's the renderer. So now we're, we also need to remember to add the renderer and also set some of the styling on the, on the canvas itself. Okay. I didn't talk about this. It's, it's here for, for both of them and, and through all. Uh, we found it a little sluggish on some older Androids. Uh, the, I don't know if it's the ray cast. I don't think it was the ray casting. I think it was the constant caching of the, the Zim objects. 
So we're not supposed to do that. Cache is not supposed to keep on going, 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 going. You're supposed to just cache it and then it uses that cache. But for interactive objects where you're moving interactive things, then you've got to update that cache. So this is just reducing the frame rate to 30 frames per second if we're if we're struggling. But on yeah, I've got, I've got it. Uh, a five-year-old Mac um, iPad, and it works fine there. It's like smooth as butter. So uh, I think that in general, we're pretty good. All right, did you like that? So that was a, a look through the raw version of it. And now what we're going to do is take a look. If you don't mind, you're welcome, like I said, to take a pause and go get a cookie. Oh, wouldn't I like to pause and go get a cookie? But we're going to take a look through the stuff that we commented out up in Zim. So hopefully you've got a good sense of how easy that was. Make a texture active here. And then do a couple lines to add that texture active to your scene down below in the 3JS stuff. All right, the contents of the menu. All righty, so let's bring this back then. We'll just bring it all back. And we don't need the circle anymore. So taking out that single circle that we added and just to refresh our minds as to what that looked like, here it is. So what we put on there is a circle that we're dragging. We have a color picker. We have a, a slider that's going to scale that, something that animates that, a button that adds, animates it. We have a logo here, which will link off to Zim. And we've got the texture active logo that uh, clicks through and does this. Okay, so this is all of the stuff that we're looking at here in Zim. Let's have a quick look through it. There we are making a circle. I don't know if you noticed, but we have a Zim Duo, it's called, so we can make a new circle like this. And we can pass in a radius of 100 and a color of pink and do whatever we want to it. Now here we are chaining a dot center. And we're going to center that on the menu. Okay, and dot drag it. Uh, we've got a lot of chaining going on in Zim, but we also have the Zim Duo technique where we can pass in normal parameters in order, or we can pass in an object literal with the properties that match the parameter names. Then the order doesn't matter. The reason why we did this is because we're scaling the circle, we wanted to get to this stroke object right here, which says ignore scale. Otherwise, as we scaled the circle, do you want to see it? If we turn that off, no, we don't need that circle. As we scale the circle, the border gets bigger. It's not the end of the world. All right, the border's fatter. The border's getting, like I said, not the, not the end of the world, but I just uh, decided that I wanted that not to happen. So in that case, we get this. Now, as we scale it, the border doesn't get bigger. Okay. So that's the reason why I went to the Zim Duo technique here of the, of the configuration object. We thought that was so great. We invented that for Zim for years and years and years. We said, oh, this is so amazing. What a handy thing for, for us to have here. And then <laughs> like about a month ago, two months ago, my kid, uh, talked to me and said, Pragma, yeah, Pragma is a is sort of a character in Zim as well, my kid Pragma, talked to me and said, um, you know, Python does that. <laughs> and I went, what? What? It does it a touch differently. It does it actually better where it just you know, it does it almost like default uh, JavaScript parameters, you know, like where you go radius equals 100. But anyway, sure enough, Python does it. Well, what do you know? Anyway, we do it in Zim. As far as I know, we're the only Canvas framework or JavaScript framework that does that. We've open sourced that on our GitHub if you want to do it too. Uh, it has been extremely handy for us. It allows us to have many, many parameters and just use it right there like properties. It's, it's excellent. Anyway, there we are centering on the menu. Don't forget to put it on the menu. And we're dragging the on top. Uh, if we did the... If we didn't do the on top false, by default, what happens is whatever is dragged comes up to the top. And then you get this, where I've picked up the circle now, and it's coming up on top of everything. It is, <laughs> and it's masked, which obviously looks awful. 
there. But um, anyway, we don't want the circle coming up on top. So with our drag, we say on top false. And now when we pick it up, it doesn't come up on top. It stays on its layer. And indeed, that looks much better. And that's just optional what we did there, uh, that, that masking. I just wanted to show you uh, what that would be like. Well, it wasn't too optional because if we dragged it to the corner, that was the problem. If I dragged it to the corner, you see how we've got the corner of the menu there? Um, it, it, just, uh, it could still be seen there. It is cropped on our texture. So when we map this to the texture, we made the, the texture the same size as, as the object here. Uh, it's cropped, but the corner of it is not. So you would have seen the corner of the circle in there unless you masked it. Okay, we mask a little bit later. Maybe we can take a peek at that. Here's the button. We have a label of spin on that button. This is the purple button down there in the corner. When we ta oh we positioned it so Zim has pose which is a way much all of this stuff that if you're coming into Zim for the first time you've got to go look at the the videos about how to use Zim that's one of the first things you'll see is how to position things you can center it you can locate you can loc you can pose those are the three main ones there's also center reg uh, pose puts things around the edge so that's basically saying 50 50 from the left bottom please add. Uh, that to the menu. Okay, so we're positioning this button on the menu at 50 pixels and 50 pixels from the left bottom. And then when we tap on it, call this arrow function, we also have on, like events, add event listeners, but they're not chainable. The on method isn't chainable because it returns an ID to turn the event off. So we added a few chainables, uh, like change. Change is one. Do we have a change here? Yeah, there's a change. So rather than do on change, we're just chaining on a change method. Instead of a click or a mouse down, we're chaining on a tap. And so those are the two that help us with components most often. And when we tap on it, we're setting the... Oh, just for some variety here. I don't know if you noticed that, but whenever I spin it, that spun on an angle like that, and this time spun on an angle the other way. And so every time I spin it, it spins on a slightly different angle. Okay, and that's because we've rotated the circle a random 360. We don't let you tap while it's spinning. Uh, for, for Anyway, we don't need to, this is what we would go through in a Zim Explorer, et cetera, like that. I just want to take you briefly through some of the things. There we are animating the scale to a negative scale. And that's basically flipping it four times, a loop count. We could have also animated it that times four, I guess, and just ran it once. And there's a call. So this is a callback when it's done. That's what we do. We activate the mouse again. There are some key reasons for that. Usually it's not all that difficult. But the thing is, we are not only animate, we're spinning it, which animates its scale, but we're also using the slider. And so that, that means we got two two different things that are uh, playing around with the scale. So that makes it tricky. Usually it's, it's not that hard, uh, but because we're animating the scale and using the slider on the scale, there are some reasons that we, we don't want to spin it and then use the slider because uh, that would affect, um, affect, the, affect the situation. So that's why it's a little trickier than usual. There's the slider. Um, we're telling it to have a max and a min. This slider is just adjusting the scale. And so we're positioning the slider at the center. That's one nice thing. We got the idea for pose or for positioning in from HTML CSS when they can do the left and the top and the right and the, and the bottom. That was very handy. They don't do a center though. We do a center and that is even handier. Yay. Um, if, you, <laughs> if you've put up with trying to center bloody stuff for years in HTML and CSS, you'll know that Centering can be a little bit annoying in HTML and CSS. It's gotten better with uh, Flexbox and stuff, but still. Um, all right, and there we are setting these circles scale to the slider's current value. We could have wired this as well. That's a dot wire uh, to the circle. So we would have said slider is a new slider, dot wire, the circle, scale. 
and tell it the scale, and it was adjusted the scale based on the current values. So that's another thing that we've got going on in, in Zim, an alternative to events called Wire, which is, uh, anyway, blah, blah, blah. There's the Made With logo right there. So this is the Zim Made With, and if you cl click on that, it opens up Zim. Okay, so that's, how does it open up Zim? It does that with, oh, automatically it's built in. But otherwise it would be a dot tap and then Zgo, Z-G-O for uh, a Zim's Go. Zim's got a whole bunch of little short things. There's Zog, which is a short form for log. There's Z-I-D, oh, that get, uh, it's like the dollar sign in, in jQuery, grabs an ID. There's also Z-S-S, which changed. Anyway, we've got a bunch of short little uh, globals. <clears throat> Here's the color picker. We're passing in an array of colors and it will have that many columns. We're scaling that, rotating it so that it goes, normally a color picker goes along the side, but there we are scaling it, sticking it up along there. And when it changes, we're changing the circle's color to the color picker's selected color. And we're changing the circle's border color to a darkened version of the color. So that's us darkening a color rather than setting its alpha and there's also a lighten which we can lighten a color and there's also a two color where we can change to towards another color to any color and there we are so that's what that is doing and note that the border is a slightly darker version of whatever was selected we've got a header which is a rectangle the the width and 100 high it's black and there's its corner so its corner is matching. So what we're building here is this little shaded rectangle part. Its corner is matching the corner value from up above. We're setting its alpha to 2. We're adding it to the menu. That just adds it at 0, 0, so that's where we want it. And we've said, don't um, block the mouse. Other, so you see how I can pick that up? The backing, this comes with a backing property. The backing, by default, will let Orbit Zoom operate on it. If we didn't, if we didn't turn the mouse off there, like so then that blocks the mouse, that rectangle, and can't get to the backing. Okay, so we don't want that to happen. Much of this we want to block the mouse um, and not do the orbit controls, such as that. We don't want the orbit controls to do. We can actually make it so that it. Uh, the orbit controls will still do that, but we don't want to. Anyway, set the mouse back like so. And there's the shade. What is, oh, we're determining a shade based on the color. That's, uh, we don't really need to do that. I don't know why we put it in the example. Uh, when we were working on it initially, if you change the backing, say, to a black, we have a, a, a reverse version of this logo. And that's one of the parameters. So here's the right on the texture active as a static class we're calling the make logo so a make logo is a static method on on the class there and we're passing it either light or dark that's uh, the shade i guess to black or white yeah, I, mean, I can't remember maybe that can also be uh white or black and true, uh, oh, is interactive. So normally the logo isn't interactive. So just watch that there. You, you probably won't need the logo. We're using it for promotional things, obviously. So there is the logo not interactive. And that means that you can do something like that. It was halfway through creating all this stuff that we realized, oh, it might be nice to actually make it so that when you press on this, it does the T. So that's us doing the T. But uh, we can also call a method to do that. And... That is done through here. Uh, what was that? True. We're scaling that a little bit bigger. We're positioning it. And when we tap on it, we're calling the texture actives manager, telling it to toggle. Uh, we found that you could actually have more than one texture managers, like, sorry, texture actives, uh, because you would have a texture active object for your ortho HUD, and you would have a texture active collection texture actives collection for your non-ortho hub. 
and those are two different texture actives and they need to tile all of the Zim objects across there so that we can use them and they don't overlap. And therefore we had to provide a manager and we made that all work in the back. The manager in the back makes sure that it looks at all the texture actives and tiles um, them collectively and also handles the toggling uh, collectively. <laughs> well, I'm going to be a, a little bit late in the bubbling for this, as a matter of fact. This is more like an explorer, isn't it? But we're almost there. Finally, we set a rectangle that is the same size as our menu with the same corners or shingle corners. Oh, yeah, right. We don't want the top of that. Okay, so what we're doing here is setting the mask to this white space. So uh, we don't we don't want to see the circle through the top. That was just a goofing around, basically. So what we've done is we made a rectangle that's as big as this part right here. But it has its corners on the bottom, but on the top, it doesn't have corners. So that looks like this. It's a rectangle that's the same width as the menu, but it's the same height minus the header height. It's clear, so we can't see it. And the corners are 0 and 0 on the top left and right and 20 and 20 on the bottom right and bottom left. Okay, we're positioning that at the bottom. So zero, zero at the bottom on the menu. And basically that would look like this if we didn't make it clear. Let's make it green, like so. Okay, there is the rectangle that we just made. We're using that as a mask. Note that I can't press through that rectangle but if it's clear, I can. If it's faint, I can't. Ready for this? So there's faint. I can't use the orbit controls on it because I'm not clicking through. I can click through up here, but I can't click through on that rectangle even though it's faint. So faint is an alpha of 0 0.01 and that's the faintest color that is interactive. If I make it clear, that's not interactive. Uh, the other option, I could, could make it any color I want, like um, blue, and then say, don't have a mouse dot no mouse. What no mouse does, if I can spell it, is it uh, turns the mouse children and the mouse enabled off. Both of those things have been around since the dawn of time in interactive media. Mouse enabled and mouse children. And uh, that's what no mouse does, because those mouse enabled mouse children are sort of <laughs> surprising, or you wouldn't know about it. So we've made it a bit easier for people. I've been using Flash before this for 10 years, 15 years, and I was using Director before that for another 10 years. So I've been doing this since 1995, and it's the same stuff in behind. Zim is honed throughout the years by very, very, very smart people making interactive media work. And Zim carries on in the tradition. All of that stuff is still available and made even easier. Anyway, there we are setting the mask. So the circle's mask is now this rectangle. And that's why when we drag this, hopefully I changed the color. I didn't. That's why when we drag this back to clear, we see the circle underneath that like that. Okay, great. That's a little bit of a tour then, a look at some of the power of Zim. Very simple power. There's all sorts of things that we can do. We could put a particle emitter on here um, when, when we spin it. Do you, do you want to see that? Let's see if it works. Uh, so when we do the spinning, that's on the button here, isn't it? So where is the button? There's the tap of the button. I'll just do it quickly. This is slightly the wrong way to do it, but emitter dot loc. So loc is another way that we can locate something at the circle. Loc is usually at x and y properties, but if you give it an object that has an x and y property, it will assume that you wanted it loc there. Um, this will keep on going though, rather than spurt, so we'll probably want to spurt. Oh, it didn't. Refresh, spin, and I'm not seeing any spurting. What's going on with our particle emitter? Uh, do we have an error? No. Okay, let's go into the T here. Uh, the particle emitter is working there, but not working on the active. So we'll have to figure out why that is. 
I'm sure that we can uh, get that going. So it worked in the background. Let's uh, refresh this, go into the back, move this about and spin particle. Oh, I know why. Do you know why? Do you see it? We located it at the circle, but we have to make sure that it's not on the stage, but rather in the panel. So comma null, comma the next is the panel. So what was that called? menu. All right, so normally loc involves an x and y. We can certainly do it this way, circle.x and circle.y. It seems almost more balanced now. <laughs> All right, so located at the circles x and circle y in the menu, and we can put a layer if we want, which layer would come next. But we don't need that. We're just going to put it right on the menu. As a matter of fact, we should spurt that dot spurt. So that will um, spurt, say, 20 times. We've located at the menu, but let's uh, get rid of that comma. And this becomes null. We use null, uh, Zim is ES5 in the back, and null is fine for triggering default uh, parameters. Oh my God, so it's handy. Okay, fine, maybe one out of 100 things I might build, one out of 500 things I might build, I wanna pass in a null and actually have that come through as a value. But for some reason, when JavaScript went to ES6, undefines trigger. So you, you be careful if you're in the ES6 world, un, you might need undefines, but we're still okay with nulls. It's just shorter to type. So anyway, a new emitter located at the circle, we have to skip over the Y value and make sure to add it at the menu. And we got this. So that was a good test for you. You ready? Uh, let's move that over here and we hit spin. Oh, there we go. Unfortunately, one of the colors of that, oh, let's change the color. Are they all Zim colors? I can't remember. Do we have a yellow? One of the colors of the emitter by default is, um, I think that could be easily changed. There's our emitter. What are we emitting? How about a new rectangle? Uh, there we go. So this is emitting a new rectangle when we press on that. And put that over here or whatever. Okay, there goes the new rectangle. Zim's got these dynamic parameters, which means that we could, let's give it uh, 50, comma 50, comma, and then we could put in an array of colors, red, blue, yellow. Okay, ready? Now we'll get those. So isn't that so much fun? Let's put that over here, spin, and we get littler rectangles this time. Oh, isn't that so cool? Okay, so that's a little bit about um, Zim. We've gone through all that stuff. Let's uh, bring this back and come on back into here and head on back to the home page. Boop. Whew, that was some bubbling. And check out the other uh, Zim um, videos that we're going to do that are called the Explore videos. So there's all sorts of explore videos. We'll explore these other ones right in here. So if we come back here. We just looked at this one. We're going to explore each of these because this is just so phenomenal, so much fun. Join us at zimjs.com slash slack and zimjs.com slash discord. We'd love to hear from you there and help you along with anything that you need. Okay, I'm Dr. Abstract. This has been a What's Bubbling at Zim. A longer one, but an exciting one. Cheers.